Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Lincoln Project Town Hall. We are doing this weekly. The spotlight is on Michigan this week. I am Maya May, and I am here with the wonderful Jeff Timmer. Oh, wait, he's over here. Jeff Timmer, <laughs> who is in Michigan, Senior Lincoln Project Advisor. And a lot is going on in Michigan. Each week we are spotlighting a different state that is critical to democracy. And if you've been paying attention to what's going on in Michigan, you know very well that there is some craziness going on. Jeff, you and I were talking about this earlier today. Boy, I, you know, Michigan, for, for all of Florida's uh, attention, you know, for weird shit happening and uh, the Florida man, you know, Michigan looks at that a lot and says, hold my beer. And yeah, you know, Michigan's like Florida, but has seasons. Uh, and there, the the politics here uh, have become very, very, very strange and weird. The candidates are very fitting. Uh, the candidates on the Republican side are very uh, representative of how weird and strange the electorate has has become. And uh, um, I look forward to this discussion tonight with our guest because uh, you know she yes. is watching this uh, as part of her job every day and has to be shaking her head at. Uh, even though she's the opposition, runs the Democratic Party, um, has to be saying, what is going on here? This is not a professional kind of organization with the normal kind of candidates that we're used to dealing with. Well, that's absolutely right, because in order to play the game of democracy, we want both sides to be playing with a full deck, as my dad would say. And um, from what I'm seeing from the Republican Party, and we are going to go over the governor's race, the secretary of state's race, uh, as well as the attorney general's race tonight. And we're going to be taking some of your questions that you've submitted. So we're going to be uh, answering those. So definitely stay tuned through the whole town hall for that. Um, and this is something where we also want to highlight the union, which always needs volunteers. That is our pro-democracy organizations coming together across the country to make sure that we are doing the work on the ground, right? So it's not just things that are happening online, but it's also stuff that's happening on the ground in these key races. So um, we're going to bring in our guests this evening because I think it's really important to watch the uh, clip that we were talking about Together. earlier. I'd love to have LaVar Lavar Barnes. Welcome to the Lincoln Project Town Hall. How are you? I am great, Maya. Jeff, great to see you both great to be here thank you excellent so, so we were all talking <laughs> we were all talking uh ahead of this about the i don't even know if i want to call it a political ad that's what it is though you, yeah, know? you have to call it i mean it's 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 uh what passes for a political ad in in today's republican party they don't have money right now in michigan to put ads on actual tv so they've created some themselves and mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. interesting uh interesting curious word. is maybe yeah. the way to uh, yeah, curious is a good word for it jeff I, I i like curious clearly not vetted you know when we do ads i spend a lot of time watching it forwards and backwards and not sure anybody did that with this one. Yeah, and <laughs> Lavora, since you're the chair of the Michigan Democratic Party, you must actually be pretty pleased that this is the kind of <laughs> this is the kind of ad that you're up against. I think we do need to roll it. So roll it. They need to see it. People need yeah, to see you it. You got to see it. You know, to really feel it. Hey, have you seen the TV ads with the governor talking about the great things she's done for Michigan? She's a liar. Whitmer can say what she wants, but we live here. Just look around, man. During COVID, Whitmer locked down businesses like the Owasso Barber and put one woman from Holland in jail. Oh, yeah. 3,000 restaurants closed. And she's pro-business? Yeah, right. And what about those higher gas and food prices? Our schools were closed for almost two years. Poor kids. Speaking of kids, Whitmer says she's going to work like hell to keep killing babies. And she put COVID patients in Graham's nursing home. Graham died alone. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm voting for the other chick. What's her name? Tudor Dixon. Okay, let's roll. Watch out for potholes. Whitmer never kept her promise to fix the, the damn roads. roads. This can't be real. For the other <laughs> what? It's not real, right? Tell me it's not real. 
Both of you are so Michigan. Real. Tell me this isn't real. It's so real, Maya. It, it, it's it's real. I'm I'm pretty sure that the the guy uh, with the blonde hair that looks to Cameron says Graham died alone as Marjorie Taylor Green, but uh, <laughs> but wow. <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> I don't even know where to where to begin. It, it's things have gotten so crazy that I was watching uh, some of the social media today and there's Republican consultants, people I've known and worked with who are trying to spin this as something that resonates with working class voters that uh, the, the uh, those who are mocking this, it shows how out of touch they are with the way real people talk and live. And, Okay, let's let's think about it. Let's that's break that they, down. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Think about that's what they think about real people. That 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 first of all, the the the, the, the number of do rags in you know bandanas in that so was many. pretty damn impressive. And uh, in so many you know, colors. Oh, right? very crisp though too. Yes. Like, I feel yeah. like they put a lot into the outfits for this. So if you want to <laughs> applaud them, mm -hmm. not much strategy per se, but. Excellent Definitely costume. some thought and planning. I wonder, did like one person buy all the outfits? Did they just send out an email that said, everybody wear your fill in the blank? Because I'm not sure how you describe that. But yeah, the outfits, they yeah. got it together. The, and then, the messaging. Dude, the, here, when you're talking about your candidate and all you do is talk about the other candidate and say her name multiple times, and then you say you're going to vote for the other chick, um, that doesn't really resonate with me as a way to deliver a message about the importance, particularly when your candidate has no ads of her own. Like this thing that you're creating in this driveway mm -hmm. is all she's going to have. And this is what you decided to do. I, yeah. But it did get our attention, right? It so did. we're all, we're all talking about it now. And I think that's actually truly important because we've got to talk about this race. So we have Gretchen Whitmer, who is, uh, by all means, uh, has done a wonderful job in Michigan. Yeah. It feels like Michiganders feel that. They yeah. see the work that she's doing. And then you have Tudor Dixon, who reshared this ad as if this is something that she is proud of. So can you talk a little bit about who Tudor Dixon is and what she means for Michigan versus uh, Gretchen Whitmer? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's hard, Jeff, to talk about who Tudor Dixon is and what she means for Michigan, right? I, you know, this is a woman with with no real background or experience that speaks to the the job of governing a state like Michigan, or even my kids' PTO. Um, and she's, you know, she's out here with some of the most radical thoughts, ideas, and plans for Michigan that I have ever heard out of the mouth of a gubernatorial candidate. She's got none of the traditional support that one would, would expect. And, you know, it, the, the contrast between that and what, what I believe, I'm a little biased, but the best governor in the country, Governor Whitmer, the contrast is so strong. But think about how hard it is to run against someone who really has just so much that is just crazy like how do you talk about you know vampire softcore porn how do you talk about yeah. all of those things that are odd and weird when you're trying to run a serious campaign that's important to the lives of people of michigan this governor our governor whitmer wants to actually make sure people of michigan are taken care of the people of michigan have the tools they need to lead good lives to educate their kids to have the money in their pocketbooks to pay their bills and and get their prescriptions and then she's running against someone who's not talking about any of those issues, but is instead just, I hate to keep saying crazy, but I just, like, what is the word, Jeff? What, what We're going to be saying crazy know. a lot tonight, too. Yes. Well, I don't know that we, yeah, I, I've said this on Twitter. I don't think the English word has a sufficient, I, or the English language has a sufficient word to describe just how crazy what we're seeing is. Yeah, yeah. We need to invent one. Maybe the Germans have one. They seem to have some some great descriptive uh, terms. Right. But this, it, it really is astounding. And, and I, you know, people who, who are watching this and, and know me know my, I'm a recovering Republican. And I've known and worked very closely with every mm -hmm. Republican who's run for governor since 1990. John Engler, uh, his three runs, Dick Postumus, Dick DeVos, Rick Snyder, Bill Schuette. Uh, these people were serious, uh, serious politicians with long elected histories and, and, and positions of, of they'd been involved in serious governing and they understood politics. They had a base of support or they were um, uh, 
very successful in uh, the, the business, business world, having right. run major companies and, and translated that into uh, political success. Tudor Dixon has no qualifications, uh-huh. none whatsoever. They're not even, they call her a, 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 a business executive and former commentator. Okay, I own a business and I commentate. Does that make me, you know, necessarily qualified to be governor based on that? It, it, they've, More they've, qualified than Tudor Dixon. She's running, <laughs> well, she's running a very aggressive but low budget campaign for a local school board. She just happens to be the nominee of a major party for governor. And as crazy and as is um, weird and as extreme as her positions are, and I was saying, you know, I've known and worked with all these Republicans, none of them, none of them have ever had the extreme positions that she has on things like abortion. abortion. Yes, we've had mm-hmm. Republicans who are pro-life and would would call themselves anti-abortion, but none were ever against the exceptions for rape or incest or for the mother's health like she is. That is just so far outside the norm. Um, None have ever been deranged enough to talk of two years later about overturning and decertifying the last election just because the candidate she supported didn't get enough votes. I mean, there's policy differences. Yes. And we've fought in the arena and, you know, you and I way back when we, when we were opponents, you know, we, we, but we fought within the the normal bounds of democracy where we went out and, and we, we articulated our, our position, supported our candidates, but we accepted the wins and the losses. And when you lose, you didn't just say, no, I didn't. And no, you didn't. spend all the next, you, you, you go on and you plan for the next election. That's, That's what exactly you do. Right. And, and, and she's, and she's, not, she's, she almost, because the rest of the Republicans on the ticket and so many around the country are so much more belligerent and so much more visibly crazy. She almost looks like she's not as crazy as a comparison. But if you just look at what Tudor Dixon stands for and what she does and what she says, it's scary. And she disappeared for a while, Jeff. I mean, she sort of went underground. And I think, I think that's probably a deliberate tactic because the less people see of her, the, the less they hear of these, these outrageous positions that she has. I mean, like you, you can't in normal political discourse, actually believe that it's funny to make a joke about a plot to kidnap and murder the governor of your state you just it's just not normal and the more she talks the more time she spends out in public the more of that sort of thing that comes out of her mouth and i I can understand why she sort of went quiet for a while and maybe she should go quiet again yeah and i think that was one of the first things she said when she re-emerged so um as far as polling goes whitmer is up so in the polls by 10 points does that surprise you so i'm going to jump in here the the numbers look good the public numbers always look like something right but let's remember this polling is just a snapshot made by one polling company i have to tell you on the ground here in michigan you can never take anything for granted. And I know Governor Whitmer's not taking it for granted and neither are we. We believe we are running close and we're running hard and we're going to run all the way through the finish line. Um, you know, th- this is the kind of thing, looking at the polling that got us in trouble with Trump, right? Folks were looking at those numbers thinking, oh, we got this. Well, we didn't have it. And you don't know that you have it until you've walked till the end of the line and made sure that every person has cast that ballot and those votes have been counted. So we're going to keep working, but it feels good on the ground. I'm going to be honest about that. Like when we, when we're on the doors, when we're making phone calls, when we're talking to voters, it feels good for Democrats. It feels good for Governor Whitmer. And is it because people see what Whitmer's doing and understand that she's been a good governor for Michigan or is it because people are afraid of what Tudor Dixon represents because, you know, she's, anti-LGBTQ, she's anti-choice, she seems to be anti any kind of progress whatsoever for Michigan. So what are you seeing that people are gravitating for? I think that there are a a lot of people who have made a decision and moved toward Whitmer who might not have done so quite this early in the race because of the Roe decision. Um, I think that the fact that the governor has, has been fighting to protect the freedom to choose since the very beginning and has been very vocal about that has moved a lot of folks toward her early in this cycle, earlier than they might've come otherwise, say post-primary, they started moving this way. Post-primary, now that we've got an opponent who is so extreme on abortion, 
Um, I think more people are moving towards the governor because of that. I think that there are a lot of people who appreciate the hard work this governor did during COVID. It was a tough, tough time to try to run a state and she did a magnificent job. And I think people understand that. People appreciate the work she's done. You know, the, I can attest to the fact that the roads are getting fixed because I was just sitting in traffic <laughs> yesterday. Um, so I know that the roads are getting fixed. Um, so I think that there is a lot of a lot of that, a lot of people who believe in what the governor is doing and what the governor will do, who recognize that a lot of the work that she wanted to do was blocked by a Republican legislature that sort of woke up the morning after she was elected and decided they weren't going to let her get any of her proposals through. Um, and they've done a pretty good job of blocking just about everything the governor tried to do in that legislature. So um, there's, a, there's a mix of that, Maya. Some, some folks who understand the work that the governor has done and will do, and some folks who are coming over because they see what's happening on the Republican side and they don't recognize it. They don't recognize it, and Jeff will talk about this, I'm sure. They don't recognize it as the Republican Party that they've known, the Republican Party that they've been a part of. This is, this is different, and they don't like it. No, I think you, I think you summed that up very, very well. I, for there are there are many good democratic candidates around the country uh there are some governors or, or people josh shapiro in pennsylvania for instance um steve sisolak in nevada um katie hobbs in arizona tony evers the incumbent governor in in wisconsin all running very good campaigns uh they're smart they, they've got a good track records in their current offices and, and running good campaigns i think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody running a better campaign and running having performed better in office than gretchen whitmer has okay. i want to give credit to to other democrats but she's done an exceptional job in an exceptionally tough state you see these polling numbers come out these public polling numbers and it looks looks like, you know, Michigan is bluer than it actually is. And I think that, uh, you know, we need to be concerned because it's not. Gretchen Whitmer's making it look that way right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Because she's done such a good job uh, in, in, in done a, a, a job that many Republicans have, have quietly and some openly cheered openly. Uh, during COVID. Her, while, while other governors were suffering, uh, you know, uh, declines in their favorability rating and job performance, she held pretty strong. When Joe Biden was testing in the mid thirties or low thirties in, wow. in polls in Michigan and elsewhere, she was, uh, Whitmer was consistently polling above 50%. People mm -hmm. approved of the job she was doing. They, they were making that distinction at the time between, okay, I don't, I'm not happy with what I'm seeing from Joe Biden, but I'm really okay with what I'm seeing from Gretchen Whitmer. She established her own brand that, that wasn't dependent upon the, the the president performing well in Michigan. Now that his numbers are rebounding, it makes it even that much easier for her just to run on her record rather than be this be a referendum uh, on on you know the 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 uh, performance from the White House. Yeah, let's actually. Um, I want to jump to an audience question before we talk about the other races, um, since we are talking uh, about the uh, Whitmer Dixon race. Um, Annie J asks, uh, I'm from the Upper Peninsula and doing everything I can to try to stop Tudor Dixon. What can or organizers like me do more of to help get out the vote in rural parts of the state? So, Lavora, Upper love Peninsula. It. Love, love it. Love it. Love hearing from Rupers. So um, we have uh, several programs, michigandems.com, click volunteer and sign up to do all of them. Um, so we're using distributed organizing quite a bit in places in the in the UP because we have only three offices in the UP. And as you all know, the UP is huge and there, there's three offices are not close together and it's hard to get to an office. So you can reach out to our team, our coordinated campaign team. They will get you a list of voters. They will get you lit that you need. They will get you phone numbers to call so that you can be talking to voters and reminding them of the importance of this election, the importance of voting for the Democrats from the bottom of the ticket to the top, including Governor Whitmer. And uh, so we can stop Tudor Dixon. We have so much. There's text programs. There's you know social media post programs. There's we, we have any way you want to get involved. As I like to say, I like to have lots of on ramps for folks, ways that you can get involved at whatever level makes you most comfortable. And we've got them. If you just go to our website and click volunteer, we can get you all signed up. We appreciate it. Yeah. All hands on deck. Everyone. All hands. Definitely. Well, one of the best ways you can stop Tudor Dixon is one campaign in the sunlight because vampires don't <laughs> like that. And we're, we're a necklace <laughs> of garlic. 
in you should be okay in the upper peninsula i don't want anybody to have to google vampire anything people are going to do it maya now that we keep bringing it up people are yeah going i know to i'm, I'm it. sure everybody now is open don't do it at work though it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh let's talk about the secretary of mm. state race yeah. um because that is uh we got another we've got to get a synonym for crazy um because we have somebody uh in that race who says that now you know laura barnes you can answer this she says that the you know the democrats are basically this satanic party the party of uh satanists what she does say that she 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 also talks about you know demonic spirits being passed through sexual intercourse um she she said some interesting big news things. is true Big, big news, <laughs> it's true. Um, it, 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 the thing that fascinates me about this this candidate is that she, she's running against the woman who wrote the book on how to be a secretary of state, right? Like Jocelyn Benson knows this job inside and out. And this woman on the Republican side doesn't seem to even know that she's running for secretary of state. She doesn't talk about any of the issues directly related to the job, except for the fact that she doesn't believe in the results of the 2020 election. And if she had the chance, she would undo them. So you got a secretary of state candidate who wants to basically be able to erase people's votes because she doesn't agree with them. But other than that, everything she talks about is just hatred and um, anger. She's just, I don't even, again, crazy. It's not the right word. It, there's not an, a word that, that but it's it, what she is not is, a credible candidate for secretary of state that i can yeah. tell you yeah basically all i've seen her do a lot of is make those videos where she's like walking and like spouting conspiracy theorists in front of buildings like that <laughs> seems to be the bulk of her campaigning yes. jeff how did the republican party in michigan uh get to the point where that is the candidate of choice. Mm. Yeah, Jeff, how did that happen? <laughs> well, it all started with uh, Nixon's Southern strategy. And then God sent Pat Robertson to run for president and the Kansas City Royals fired Rush Limbaugh, who went into talk radio. But uh, I digress. Um, she is indicative. She, th these candidates, whether it's Tudor Dixon or Christina Caramo, uh, or any of the other crazies, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greens, these are not anomalies within the Republican Party today. These candidates have become mainstream representative of the party, of the, the leaders in that. They are the leaders in the party. They're the nominees in major statewide offices in a critical purple state. And the, 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 the people who, uh, who, are, who still call themselves Republicans and look at these people like Christina Caramo or Tudor Dixon and say, they're not my Republicans. Well, you're not recognizing the fact that that party you knew is no longer there. Mm -hmm. you're, there there's still so many of my former brethren and sisters who are going through the seven stages of grief. Many of them are still in the denial stage that they think that somehow <laughs> their, their loved one is going to come back. And it's just not the case. This, this party is so far gone. And these people are, are sadly, they're reflective of the, the, um, convention delegates in the Republican Party of the voters in Republican primaries, because this is what these are the candidates that have come from those either the, the, the closed party system of delegate voting for some of these offices or for the statewide primaries and not just in Michigan, but across the country that these election denial, this this lunacy uh, in, in orthodoxy. Adhering to the, the, the not just um, well, okay, um, I can say the twenty or I, I'll, I I want an election reform. You have to say the twenty twenty election was stolen. Joe Biden isn't the legitimate president, or you don't even get like to play the game. You have to say it and say it with conviction, with conviction, or they're going to push you out of the party. You're going to be pushed out of the tribe, and so that's kind of like the starting point. And from there, it's just more crazy on top of crazy QAnon, um religious tinged craziness i mean the the the, the satanic demon possession stuff is wow. it, that's legit christina karama was talking about that i mean they're they had a rally at the state capitol on the lawn of the state capitol a couple of weeks ago where she followed a speaker who was talking about america needs a theocracy 
that that we need uh, to have a, a, a system that governs from a biblical perspective where men are superior to women. And then Christina Caramo comes on and talks about it. This doesn't, right. this barely gets a, a, nobody, nobody blinks at this anymore because there's this deluge of, of, of craziness that comes every day. This is the kind of thing that would have been so, so shocking to voters just mm -hmm. four years ago, the, the the last time we had a governor election and statewide election uh, for state offices, it, it would have been so far outside the, the the mainstream that these that any of these comments that she makes, Karamo or any of these others are making on a day to day basis, um, would have would have ended a candidacy, um, and and now it's just you know they they double down on it the. Christina Caramo says something crazy. Uh, Tudor Dixon applauds her for her craziness and talks about how important it is to, you know, they, they tweet about each other. Uh, and and well, they, it's, it's, it's hard to well, explain. But yeah. also when we're in this ends justify the means environment, LaVora, like mm -hmm. we all know that this is for them. It's about 2024. It's yes. about the presidential election. It's about yes. being able to deny election results if need be. And so in that environment, and this leads to actually one of our uh, questions from the audience, um, Dean Kay asks, what is the Michigan Democratic Party's message to independent voters who lean towards more conservative candidates and yeah. i'm like let's do a workshop and right. you and jeff can work this out together right because because i am i am not the expert on conservatism so we're going to need jeff to help me out with that part but i can tell you this if you're looking at what these republican candidates are saying the things that they believe they are anti-democracy small d democracy i'm not talking about whether they are democrats or republicans i'm talking about this nation and this state and what we were built on and what we believe in. And if you don't believe in democracy, if you don't believe one person, one vote, votes count, winner wins, loser sits down, then you have no business in this discourse. And if you believe those things, these Republicans are not your Republicans and are not the people that you want to vote for. If you want to protect your democracy and protect the future of this country and this state, we've got to get the Dems in this time. Now, I'm just talking to you about this time. You can talk about your conservative candidates the next time because mm -hmm. hopefully you'll take back your party and you'll run actual conservatives because, Jeff, you're going to have to tell me this doesn't feel like conservatism to me. What I've seen as conservatives in the years that I've been working in politics, this is something else entirely. But if you really believe in democracy, there's no place else to go this cycle. These Republicans are not it. They will not protect our votes. They will not protect our democracy. They will not protect our nation or our state. The Democrats are the only place you can go this cycle. That is so, so true. I mean, there, there is not a Republican at any level of government anywhere in this country that you should vote for this year if you can if you care about the country, if yeah. you care about democracy, because even even if that you say, you know, my local Republican isn't part of that QAnon crazy cult, they're going to vote for leadership who is or who's controlled by it. And so the only way, the only chance we have to return to normalcy where we have a stable center right and stable center left that keeps this country grounded and Sometimes the, the pendulum swings a little one way and sometimes it swings the other way. But the, the, the foundations of our democracy are, are in question. If you, if you ever want to return to that normalcy, we have to subject the side that is tipped the game. They're not just not playing the game. They've tipped it over and they're eating the pieces. And we've, there's got to be a penalty for that. They've got to, they've got to be shown pain and they've got to be shown loss before there's ever going to be any kind of reform. And this is not going to be a simple, you know, five weeks from now we go out and vote and Democrats win across the country in these States and the Republicans say, gosh, I guess we're doing it wrong. They're going to double down, yeah. triple down, and they're mm -hmm. going to play even harder in 2024 with Donald Trump as their likely nominee for, for president. And it's going to be, we have to prepare ourselves. And I say we, the, the pro-democracy Americans need to be prepared for a long mm -hmm. and yes. kind of an ugly fight. This mm -hmm. isn't, this isn't what we're used to. It, right. it really isn't. Um, and, and we have to, 
it's not going to go away. We, we like things to be resolved in one episode, right? <laughs> or we want to be able to binge watch and see how it ends. But this is going to take us several years and several elections to excise the cancer that has manifested itself in our politics and our culture. Yeah. I mean, Trump has already said it. He already said he doesn't think there'll be another fair election in this country. I mean, that's literally giving up on the American democracy, literally. And you Absolutely. want to be president well, and, and, of the United States? Yeah. And since and, we, and are, and about, since we know, are talking about that, I do want to, because um, we were going get to get to this later, but let's get to this now, because it is a very vague idea for a lot of people, this idea of losing our democracy and what that means. Can you talk a little bit, um, before we talk about the, the last race that we're in, the attorney general race, please talk about what Michigan means to electoral votes in 2024, what it means if we have a bunch of election deniers uh, running the state. There, there are so there's so many there's so many branches to that question, Maya. But the, the 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 basics of this are that if you want the electoral college to 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 be believed to to count for there not to be fake electors who show up on election day, right? Like you you need to believe that the democracy works. You need to believe that the tenets of our democracy that have been written out for years understood for years as the basis of this democracy, that they're true, that they're real, and that they work. And when you show up at the Capitol on the day the electors vote as a group of fake electors with your fake paperwork, pretending like you've shown up to do the job that you can't do because your candidate lost, you have erased, completely erased, your belief in that democracy. The fact that you packaged that paperwork up and sent it off to Washington, D.C. like it was real, Knowing that it wasn't real, it, it, so yeah. much of this went on in this country. This, the, the basics of one person gets to vote, that vote gets to count. Everybody who is of age gets a vote and gets to cast it either by absentee ballot or at the polling place. It seems simple when we say it, but when the folks who are charged with managing our elections, running our elections and leading our government don't believe in those sort of basic ground level tenets of democracy. We can't build from that to bigger pieces of democracy like other rights that are important to all of us. It well, breaks all of it down. Well said. And that actually brings us to the attorney general's race because DePerno is currently under investigation. investigation. How do you run for attorney general when you're under investigation? And then our poor attorney general, she can't talk about the fact that he's under investigation because it's her folks and the prosecutors who are investigating and she can't talk about it. I don't... <laughs> so just, oh. It really, yeah. I mean, it, oh, it's stop. it's astounding. It, it, we we have a, a a nominee is crazy and as bad and as unqualified as the other two nominees, Tudor Dixon and Christina Caramo, right. who we've talked about. The guy who's been nominated by the Republicans for the office of Attorney General is very likely to be indicted. Uh, probably not until after the election, but this is, relates to election fraud, tampering with voting machines as part of the crazy Trump 2020 aftermath, right? These, uh, it, there's go there are multiple, multiple felonies that have, he, he's likely to lose his law license and spend time in prison during what would be his term as attorney general. And somehow the Republicans thought, yeah, this is who we want to put mm -hmm. up as the chief law enforcement officer in this in the state. And it, it, the, the whatever anybody who who might be a Republican and what they might think about Dana Nessel, the current attorney general and her policy, her policy positions or her personality or anything else they might not like. It's 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 not. Apples to apples when you're talking Matt DiPerno and Dana Nessel. Dana Nessel is a serious attorney who was a, a county prosecutor in Wayne County, a criminal prosecutor, and then a private practice attorney. And now she's an experienced attorney general. And this guy is a, 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 a huckster a, a lawbreaker who has this very checkered career of, of uh, uh, client complaints, 
clients complaining that they paid him money and he never did what he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He's got $400,000 that he collected as part of the selection fraud investigation that he can't account for. Um, that's, you know, it, it been part of this, uh, you know, criminal investigation or part of the stories of the criminal investigation. And he um, always runs away when he's questioned about what happened to this money that he was going to use to fight election fraud. Did it just go into your pocket? You know, he's awfully silent on, on that kind of stuff. Uh, but he he's just not a, a, a serious uh, candidate in, in any year prior to 2022. And we talk about the extreme positions. He's taken on film the extreme position that even if a mother's life is in jeopardy during a pregnancy, he would not allow abortion. He would criminalize a woman, a doctor, nurses, anybody involved in an abortion when a mother's life is in danger. Absolutely. How do you even, how do you even, yeah, that, it's, right. that's, that's so far outside the, I mean, that's to the point of being cruel for the sake of cruelty. And, and uh, um, the scary part is all of these candidates, given this, the, 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 what I, what I said, Michigan might appear bluer than it actually is. This race in the races across the country, I expect them to tighten. And I expect yeah. them to become closer, and they very well could, if and when the Republicans ever spend any money. At some point, if they, if they, you know, the last five weeks, four weeks, three weeks, if they start spending some money, we have to expect this is going to tighten. And weird things have happened. If we haven't learned that since 2016, that the crazies can win, that the impossible can, what we think is, oh, people are better than that. They're not going to, if you don't get out and vote. And if you're a Republican who cares about the country more than you care about your political party or your tribe, that's what's important. And I, you were saying, how do we convince people who are who might be conservatives to to go out and vote for for these Democrats? You need to care about democracy. You need to care about the future of the country, because it really is, it, it, it's not hyperbole to say that democracy hangs by a thread. And if we have an election denier like Tudor Dixon as governor and Christina Caramo as secretary of state and Matt DiPerno as attorney general, they've already said they're going to put their thumb on the scale in 2024. Free and fair elections in this nation are over. If one state does, if multiple states, if you can't abide by the election right. results or trust the you know, game over. Yeah. How do we go forward without that shared faith? If all we have is fear of each other, you know, this is something that, you know, you and Trigvi Maya have talked about on, you know, the game we know versus the game we're in. It's mm -hmm. that, that shared faith in democracy yeah. and the, the, the fidelity to the rule of law. We can, we can agree to disagree on policy, on ideology. Uh, we might be disappointed when our candidates lose elections, but if, if we can't accept the fact uh, then the, this this experiment is at an end, and it's uh, yeah. we're it's we're only a couple, you know, twenty twenty two and twenty twenty four. Either win or we don't. Right. right. We're either we're either at the end or we aren't. And you know, Jeff, you were you were just talking about how close this race is going to become, and it is going to be close. And one of the things that is is fascinating to me, and I think you and I need need to accept our part in this. We have become so polarized. Democrats versus Republicans, that there are Republicans who can't imagine themselves voting for a Democrat because we have demonized Democrats so much. And the same on the Democratic side. And this is the cycle where we've got to break that. We've got to get past that division where you're voting for someone just because they're Republican. And you need to look deeply at who these Republicans are, right? And who you're voting for. And I think we've, we've, We've we've helped build this, right? This is part of what I've built as part of my brand, right? Is like please vote for the Democrats, the Republicans are the bad guys. Um, and and same for you. Republicans vote, please vote the Republicans, Democrats are the bad guys. But we need to get past that. I I, I used to say during the 2020 cycle and in 2016, I apologize for every bad thing I ever said about Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney was not that bad because look at Donald Trump. <laughs> right. Like and and because of the words we said and the rhetoric we used in times like that, when we were yeah. running against a Romney, it mm -hmm. becomes harder for people to hear me say it when I say it about Donald Trump.
because it sounds so much like what I said about Mitt Romney and they know Mitt Romney wasn't that bad, right? And so this is right. the place where we have brought our political discourse. And right. now we're reaping, frankly, what we have sown over the years, mm -hmm. but we have got to get past it to save the democracy. We just have to. Absolutely. And when I think about democracy, I think about stability. And so mm. it's required and trust, trust in each other, trust in the system yeah. is required for that. Um, this is a perfect time to turn to one of these audience questions because it speaks to the environment that we are mm. in. Um, Maria R. asks, does anyone anticipate oh. armed militia showing up at Michigan polling places? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll jump. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think we need to be prepared for any eventuality. I think what we saw in 2020 was kind of an amateurish dress rehearsal for what we're going to see in 2022 and 2024. And so that kind of of uh, in displays of intimidation, threats of violence, yeah. acts of violence, acts of disruption, wrenches thrown into the process, trying to. Uh, delay, uh, cast doubt into the the the, the goings on. So th to to set the stage to claim that the election was stolen. That if let's say that the the polls hold true and Gretchen Whitmer wins by ten points, that's not going to stop the Republicans and Tudor Dixon from saying that the election right. was stolen. And exactly. so they're gonna they're gonna create that 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 smoke screen. They're gonna they they, they have small smaller numbers, but they're large enough. I mean, you know, we're talking tens of thousands of people. It, all it takes is a few people to, to start showing up at the the counting center in Detroit with mm -hmm. guns this time, as opposed to just banging on the windows like last time. But those kinds of, I, I expect, unfortunately, to see more incidents like that in not just in Michigan, but across the country, um, as people have become far more radicalized uh, in, 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 it won't necessarily all be part of a coordinated through the party kind of effort, but there's like what amount, I mean, domestic terrorist cells yeah. that, that, that they're, they've been radicalized, they've been energized, they've been manipulated to think, it, uh, you know, through groups like the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers. I, I uh, hosted lunch with Lincoln today and had an author on um, who who's uh, written a book about the the, the Proud Boys and and the the, the, the scary structure uh, in the scary goals that they have and how easy it is to command an outsized presence with a mm -hmm. small number of people who are willing to go to any length to to disrupt to break things to hurt people in the process or to the the threat of being hurt I and mean, that's what it comes down to normal people they don't want to live with the threat of right. if I go to the polls, Oh my God. I mean, luckily we have other means like uh, mail and voting and whatnot, but we have to, we, we have to push back and we being pro American people who side with democracy and the rule of law have to push back on this kind of thuggery and intimidation. It was wrong when the KKK did it in the South, uh, you know, in the hundred years after the civil war. And it's no different the way it's being done by Republicans today, if they're using threats and intimidation to um, either uh, uh, change the outcome or change the makeup of who votes, uh, they're, they're not going to be do doing this disruption in areas like uh, they're not going to go into the reddest areas and no. cause a display in, you know, um, the, the reddest towns in West or Southern Michigan, they're going to do it in urban centers where they're more likely to have democratic voters. And that's just the reality that we have to have to be prepared for. That's we'll exactly right. Temporarily, so we'll just have to do this. Well, and we can, and we'll be fine. Um, and, and here's the thing. It's the intimidation factor that, that I, I, I like to be careful with how we talk about those sorts of threats, because what I don't want is to pe for people to be afraid to exercise their right to vote, because there is the threat that there will be military presence there. So what I want to hear people say is that you you said it well, Jeff, there are, are all kinds of ways to cast that ballot, whether you're doing it at your clerk's office early, whether you're doing it in a drop box, whether you're mailing it in from your home, please vote, please vote. And don't be afraid that a militia is going to be somewhere to intimidate you and try to stop you from voting. Just get that vote in and get it in early if you if you need to. Um, but the, the intimidation factor is the reason for so much of it. The hope is that it will scare folks in black and brown communities, frankly, from showing up at the polls. 
to make them think that they can't vote, to, to walk those lines and tell them, do you have past due bills? Do you have a warrant? Do you have, you know, all of those questions to try to scare people into getting out of that line and not casting those votes. And we need everybody to cast those ballots and to ignore the intimidation. And we're going to do our best to pro provide actual information, factual information about rights to vote and how to exercise that right to contrast against the efforts to block people from exercising their right. Yeah, and, and I cut off for a second. We're gone for talking. a minute, Maya. Oh, sure. Welcome back. <laughs> but I'm glad we're talking about turnout because that was going to be my ah. next question. Because um, we do, it, it's it's so key, so crucial. Yeah. And one of the audience questions um, from Kathy W. Uh, wanted to know if you'd seen any changes when canvassing or registering yeah. voters since the Dobbs decision. And I'm hoping the answer is the answer is yes. The answer is absolutely yes, positive change. I was on the phone with a, a member of the legislature today who was registering voters on a college campus. And she said she had a line, a long line of kids lined up to register to vote because of Dobbs, because they care about these issues and they want to make sure they can exercise the right to vote. Um, our voter registration registration teams all over the state have seen an uptick in people sort of seeking them out, you know, at wherever mm -hmm. they're tabling or wherever they're, you know, working a crowd to ask them, how do I get myself registered? How do I make sure I'm registered? All of that sort of information. On our canvassing, you know, we're getting a lot of questions about about the abortion issue when we're on the doors. Um, a lot of questions also obviously still about the economy. People are still interested in you know, talking about the economy, talking about jobs, um, but abortion comes up in many, if not most of those conversations. And they're always very interested in making sure that you can protect that right. And we're hearing you know, women and, and, and people who love women <laughs> say that they, they want to make sure that they have an opportunity to protect this right and this freedom. The fact that the Supreme Court rolled back a freedom that people had had for decades really resonates with folks. Even folks who say to me that they are anti-choice say, but this was a right. It's not a right I would ever take advantage of, but this was a right that was given to the people of this country that this court just took away. And I don't believe in taking away Americans' rights. So yes, we've absolutely seen an uptick. We've also, just to note, seen an uptick in fundraising. Um, when we send out an email that talks about the Dobbs decision, um, the, 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 the pennies come trickling in a little faster than from other emails as well. It's, it's an issue that is definitely resonating with folks. There's a lot of interest in helping us push that message and talk about the abortion issue um, to the voters. And uh, uh, that is excellent news. Um, another voter turnout uh, question from Walter S. wants to know how much impact will the ballot proposals like Yes on Three yeah. have on Democratic independent turnout? Yeah, I, 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 I'm hoping for a lot of impact. You know, I think a, a, a well-run ballot initiative can do a terrific job of driving folks to the polls. And then once they get there, it's my job to make sure not only do they vote for that ballot initiative, but they vote for, vote for the Dems on the ballot. Um, so we are, we are pleased that those ballot proposals are on the ballot and we believe that they will increase turnout. I think those teams are doing a terrific job talking about those issues, putting their ads up, talking to voters about the importance of casting those ballots. And I, I think it will help us um, a great deal in November. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that, you know, abortion is on the ballot everywhere in the country yeah. after Dobbs and Roe. But in places like Michigan, where it's actually on the ballot, I don't think it's hard to uh, to understate how, how important it is going to be in, in defining the, the uh, choice of that voters are facing here, not just on this issue. And I don't use that word to, as a pun, um, but it's, it, it so clearly draws a distinction between the two parties in this mm -hmm. election. And mm -hmm. it, you know, with, coming from a, a, a Republican background uh, in, in having worked closely with groups like right to life or the Catholic conference uh, in, in um, my career, I can say that this is a, a Smart Republican operatives recognize that they've. This is like the dog catching the car. Um, abortion, the 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 prospect of overturning Roe versus Wade was a motivator is a get out the vote tool uh, for evangelical Republicans for decades. It actually happening is a whole different story and it changes the, the the dynamic so completely where people who never had to seriously contemplate their daughter, their sister, yeah. their wife being imprisoned. How long should, you know, all the, all the candidates should have to answer that question. How long should a woman go to jail in Michigan 
if she participates in an abortion. Uh, that the, the, the Republicans will, oh, that's not what it, we're, this is about. It, well, but it that's is. What it is. is. That's right. what this has now become. It's gone from the theoretical to the very real. And that's why you see in, in uh, public opinion surveys across the country, one of the biggest shifts is, has been among dads. <laughs> from yes. uh, in terms in, in toward the, de the the democratic candidates now because they have to look at you know people like me have to look and say of course i don't want you know i i can say i i would hope my daughter doesn't have an abortion you right. might say that but you can say i don't want her to go to jail if she exactly. does my god what are you talking about here folks this is this is crazy. And, and you've got candidates like Tudor Dixon who are proudly, you know, she said how proud she was about forcing a 14 year old girl who was raped to have she said a it was a perfect baby. example. Yeah. And, and, and we've seen very real examples of that in states like Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've seen and, and not just the extremes like with involving children in, in, in rape, but just the, the health of women, emergency rooms, not being yep. sure whether or not to treat right. women who are in jeopardy because of fear of legal consequences. Mm -hmm. right. We've seen in a very short amount of time, the, the law of unintended consequences that, that when, when you take something from the theoretical into real world, how it changes everything. And I've never seen an, uh, an issue move this quickly and, and change the whole yes. flavor of the election. This election was about was about inflation and gas prices until it wasn't. Now I'm not right. discounting the fact that you know their economic factors still matter, but this is such an emotional issue that that cuts across partisanship that there's a large number of Republicans who are looking at the rhetoric in positions in actions by their candidates and thinking, my God, I I, I, I don't much. I think that if yeah, well, and there's there's a lot of people. I'm sure there's a lot of households um, where surveys are not measuring the differences in how the, the you know uh, uh, women aren't willing to say necessarily to their vera their their mega um, Tucker Carlson watching husbands what they're really thinking for you know mm -hmm. just to keep uh, the, the the piece at home. But I think we're going to see some surprises here. Uh, in not just in Michigan, but across the country in some of these races, like we saw in, in Kansas uh, back in, in August in their primary. And I know that was a, a primary race, and it's uh, somewhat apples to, to oranges when looking at a November race. But what we saw there is there were more votes cast in that ballot initiative dealing with abortion than there were in the, the Republican or Democratic candidate primaries combined. And I won't be surprised if the vote for Prop 3 is higher than the combined vote for governor in Michigan. Whoa, is that a prediction? Jack? I know. I was like, that's a bold prediction. <laughs> no, I, I, won't be, I won't be surprised that, 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 you know, that there, you know, if there's, there could be four and a half million votes uh, and, and, you know, there's an undervote of about a hundred thousand or so for the, for the governor candidates. So some people show up just to vote for prop three. Sure. Um, and, 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 and so in, and there will be pro folks that show up just to vote no on prop three. I'm not discounting that, but I think there's a hell of a lot more who are going to be showing up. And, and we've seen that we've seen the, 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 um, there's been a 7% increase in women 18 to 25 year old who, uh, who've uh, registered in Michigan. Yeah, sure. um, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so we've seen that in, in states across the country uh, that there's an, an, an increase in uh, female voter registration and young voter registration. And I think that's going to make a difference. Yeah. Absolutely. And this actually brings us to our final audience question. So, Lavora, it's about getting people engaged. Roland okay. K asks, how can we keep in voters engaged after the November midterms and into 2024? Because got to sustain that energy. We got to keep going, right? This is this is this is the question that we asked after, you know, we all got all worked up after we lost in 2016. Um, and folks were like very fired up and ready to go. And my worry was that they would lose that momentum rolling into 18 and they didn't. Then I was worried that they would lose that momentum rolling into 20 and they didn't. And so he here's what I say. The way we keep it going here in Michigan is that this Michigan Democratic Party organizes year round all the time. Um, so there's always something to do. There's always a conversation to be had with your neighbors, with voters about what's happening in the world, even if there is not an election coming up in the next six weeks. We are always organizing. And that's the way you keep people engaged and interested in what's going on. You can have conversations with them about what's happening in their legislature. You can have conversations with them about what's happening 
locally. But we continue to have those conversations, all 83 counties, we call our organizing project, Project 83, for the 83 counties in Michigan. Um, and that's the way we keep the conversation going. And so when we show up this time of year, it is not the first time you're seeing these Democrats at your door. We've been talking to you, frankly, at this point since 2017. I think we're probably you know, invited in for dinner at this point because we've been to folks' homes so many times. And we're gonna keep doing it all the way through 2024 because 2024 is so important. Um, after we get through 2022, we've got to make 2024. As Jeff said earlier, this is how we protect this democracy for this country and for this state is to make make this make this work in 2022 by electing these good Democrats and then make 2024 happen as well. And you know what? We've got to win decisively because when we win decisively, the country sees it. And no mm -hmm. matter how many times Republicans claim that they won, they look at those numbers, they look at their neighbors, they look at what they saw and heard in conversations on the, at the coffee shop, and they know, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. And that's what we need in 2024. Mm -hmm. We need people to understand that this is democracy, democracy works. And when somebody wins, they win and they go to the White House. And when they lose, they go home and you never hear from them again. Absolutely. Lavora Barnes, thank you so much for that. Engaging. Uh, I love the you tied it to the fact that people thought we were going to lose energy after 2016, after 2018, after 2020. People are finally you know, waking up to the fact that we do have power going. if we actually use it. And so uh, thank you for repeating that uh, over and over again so that people can hear it um, because it is about keeping the conversation going. I love it. And it's as simple as that, right? A conversation. And so um, thank you so much for being here with us tonight to uh, share more about what's going on in Michigan. Jeff, as always, hilarious. Uh, <laughs> Jeff is hilarious very funny. Things. Yes. Than thinking. <laughs> I hear that guy's an asshole. That's what people tell me. <laughs> Jeff always says the things that I'm like, ah, I wish I could say that, but I can't. So I'll just retweet it. Um, well, that's what my wife always says. I can't believe you said that. I do. Yes, you said <laughs> it. Uh, it's been a, a fun, fun evening. Everybody, uh, make sure you're following uh, Lavora Barnes. Her uh, Twitter handle is up there. Jeff Timmer, uh, myself, Maya on stage. Uh, we're going to be doing more mission and stuff this week on Wednesday. There's going to be a Twitter spaces after we're speaking. So make sure that you tune into that because Michigan is now critical and will continue to be so. So uh, please make sure you uh, set that on your schedules. And don't forget about the union. The union is sending out emails, making sure that people are aware of all of the volunteer opportunities and organizations that do need volunteers. So make sure to open up those emails, click on those links, um, help spread the word. And my and Michigan and Dems are partners with the union, so you can find ways to volunteer by watching your emails from the union. There They're it is. There. All right. There you have it. Go to jointheunion.us to volunteer. It's an all hands on deck effort. You, we already know that you know that, but maybe send that link to friends and family who are all like, what can I do to help? They don't even have to be in Michigan. They can be all over the country that because place. that's yep. the beauty of the internet, y'all. So uh, thanks again for everyone's energy tonight. Um, you can go ahead and visit us at lincolnproject.us, michigandems.com, and uh, we will uh, see you all a little bit later at the polls, hopefully, because voting is already open in Michigan, by the yeah. way. You can already vote early, so make sure you do that as well. Thanks. Have Thank a good night. you. <laughs>